Hello and good right. evening. Um, welcome to this special joint meeting of the Santa Monica Arts Commission and its Public Art Committee. Um, there will be several items uh, on tonight's agenda, but uh, before we begin, my name is Michael Masucci. I am currently the chair of the Arts Commission and um, I've been along with uh, several returning commissioners uh, reappointed and we need to be sworn in and then we are provided for a new commissioner to join. I'm hearing some strange sound, but um, I, would like, I would like to turn this over to our vice chair, uh, Commissioner Michael Baroff, who will be um, uh, bringing me back into uh, the fold. Okay, Michael, pleasure, of course. Um, Okay, well, um, I'm going to re read the um, allegiance, which I appreciate you would uh, repeat after me. I'll do it in segments. So here we go. Um, I, Michael Masushi, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States. I, Michael Masucci, do uh, affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. I, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Arts Commission. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Arts Commission. Great. Um, congratulations. Thank you. And um, thank we'll you see. so much. All right, guy. <laughs> and now it's uh, it's my uh, pleasure and, and responsibility to first um, bring back the tenured reappointed commissioners, and then. Um, have the honor of bringing on a new commissioner who I know will uh, be a great addition to this uh, body. So first I'm gonna start with Commissioner uh, Swimmer. Uh, Jeff, congratulations on your reappointment and I would like to uh, institute the um, your uh, swear. So repeat after me, I, Jeff Swimmer. I, Jeff Swimmer. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Arts Commission. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Arts Commission. Congratulations, Commissioner. Um, Thank you. Commissioner Michaels, uh, your turn. So please repeat after me. Um, I, uh, Mary Elizabeth Michaels, I'm Mary Elizabeth Michaels. Uh, do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Arts Commission. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Santa Monica Arts Commission. Congratulations, Commissioner Michaels. Thank you, ditto. And uh, thank you. And now uh, our latest addition to this body that we all uh, are going to give a firm and uh, warm welcome to is uh, Mr. Federico Galavis and soon to be Commissioner Galavis. So please, sir, um, repeat after me. Um, I, Federico Galavis. I, Federico Galavis. Do solemnly swear or affirm. I swear the affirm. Um, that I will support the Constitution of the United States that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California and the Constitution of the State of California and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Arts Commission. And I'll just faithfully charge, uh, this faithfully discharge, discharge the duties of the Arts Commission. Congratulations, Commissioner. And now, Thanks. since you are our newest member, would you please uh, do us the honor of uh, introducing yourself to this group, telling us a little bit about yourself, and um, and we all welcome you. Congratulations. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. It's an honor to be a uh, part of this uh, commission, and you know, thank you, you know, all of you for your service. Um, I'm Federico Galavis. I was born in uh, Caracas, Venezuela. I've been in the United States for about 26 years. I became an, uh, uh, an American citizen about five years ago, and uh, I've been a full-time uh, visual artist uh, for the past 12 years. For the past year, I've been uh, fully immersed in uh, the Web3, NFT, and uh, 
crypto art. So I'm pretty involved in uh, and very uh, versed in, in, in that whole new world and uh, we're building. And uh, yeah, I look forward to, uh, you know, bring all that into the city of Santa Monica. Well, welcome, sir. Congratulations, and we look forward to working with you. Um, now we'll get a, now that we've taken care of all of the uh, administrative duties and legal duties, um, it's time to really begin the body of tonight's meeting. We will start with a, a roll call. Uh, please, um, Nathan Berbaum um, from Cultural Affairs will uh, do the roll call for first the Arts Commission and then the Public Art Committee. And public art committee members, um, Nathan Birnbaum, I'm the administrator for cultural affairs. We'll begin with the public art committee. Um, uh, committee member Baroff, here. Committee member Barr, here. Committee member Gittleman, committee member Pew. You're muted, Gwen. Well, I see him here. We're not hearing you. Well, he's muted. Ah. But we, but we know. know he's here. Up here. Yes, try the phone. Uh, committee member Doherty. Committee member Vaughn. Committee member Subramanian. Here. Indeed. And Great. Gwen. I unmuted yeah. your phone that you're calling in on. So do you want to say here now? Yeah. Can you can I hear? Can you hear yes. me? We can hear you. Great. Woo! <laughs> okay. Well, Thank we'll you, do Gwen. Great. Now for the commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Chalice. Commissioner, here. Uh, Commissioner Chalice is here. Great. Yes, here. Great, great. Um, hold on a sec. Hold on, just a moment. Huh. Nathan, uh, did Commissioner you need... here, present. Commissioner Michaels, here, uh, here. Commissioner Subramanian, here. Commissioner Swimmer, here. Commissioner Yeya, I'm here, and I'm also here for the Public Art Committee. Oh, that's right. We missed you for that one. Sorry, I'm, my mistake. And we missed. Uh, did we did we pick did we get you uh, Michael Baroff? Yes. We no, did. I'm here as a commissioner as well. Commissioner Bar Vice Chair Baroff. I'm here. And Chair Masucci. I am here. Very good. Thanks so much. Thank you. And um, we have a, a interesting and I and I think quite enjoyable thing to begin with tonight. Um, we would like to welcome Emily Silver, who is the director of the Barrett Gallery at Santa Monica College. It's, we all know Santa Monica College is one of the cultural treasures of this city, and uh, and among the many artistic endeavors they do, their uh, Barrett Gallery is an uh, amazing, collaborative, and um, an educational gallery. It, it um, both uh, brings in art from outside and and all more and more um, brings in its students to uh, work in various capacities and. Um, Director Silver is going to share with us a very, very exciting exhibition that is um, about to be staged at Santa Monica College. We welcome uh, Emily Silver. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Uh, we have a screen to share. That's not mine, so we're ready for that. Um, a little bit about what's happening. We have been working, I'm, I'm a full-time professor in sculpture and 3D, as well as the director of the gallery. and I've been working the past six months with this artist, Matika Wilbur. Ready to share that document, it's great. Yeah, and her project 562. Matika is an indigenous photographer who has been traveling around um, the country for the past 10 years, uh, documenting different um, tribes and different folks uh, and the land in which that they um, that they are on. And we can go to the next image as well. This is Matika um, here. This is from her write-up that just happened in the New York Times. Uh, she's got a lot of projects happening with us at the school. The students have been working side by side to curate the exhibition, to build the exhibition out. Uh, she's took them on a photo shoot. We can go to the next slide as well. Uh, this is a little bit of information about what's coming up. 
Um, so we've done photo shoots. Uh, we're doing the first Indigenous Film Festival in November, hosted by Indigenous artists. Uh, that's in November 18th through 19th. Uh, Matika also runs a podcast called All My Relations. Some of you may have um, listened to this before. And uh, she'll be doing a live recording of that during the film festival as well. That, that'll be at the Jams Theater, the John Adams Middle School Theater, right across from SMC. And then her reception will be um, on the 11th of October, so the day after Indigenous Peoples Day. And if you could go to the next slide with that. So the students, these are just some images of the, I know Michael came by for a tour of it already, of the students um, curating and putting the work together. Go on for the next slide as well. Yeah. And then they built the walls, they did the vinyls, uh, as well as um, the gallery, there'll be learning guides that we've developed for the entire school. So it's been an entire initiative that art becomes transformative in many different ways. And one of that is through curriculum and through really changing our pedagogy, really examining the system that we that we are in. And if we could go to the next slide as well. Yeah, there's video work as well. And then the last slide. And so we were working um, all year, really college-wide. And then the last slide, one more, yeah. Um, and we'll be doing pop-ups around campus and other places down in the promenade as well. We're building these structures in collaboration with Photoville New York. And this is Matika with her cubes under the Brooklyn Bridge. This show just came down. They were also in Times Square. And we will be popping these up kind of in various places as well. So they're like photo sculptures. Uh, and we're really just interested in collaborating with the city and with Santa Monica and seeing, you know, if um, if and how you'd like to collaborate um, throughout this residency. We will be doing a mural in the spring as well as an indigenous market. And yeah, so Matika is with us till next May, the full artist in residence. A very oh. brief short overview <laughs> for you. Very brief, but but giving us a, a taste of what you know an amazing show it is. And as a as a director Silver said, both myself and at a different time, um, Commissioner Yeyek had the privilege of getting a, a sort of a sneak peek, and and the show is it's outstanding, and and the the amazing interactive uh, way that they're collaborating with the students, involving the pedagogy and turning a, a gallery also in a sense into an educational laboratory i think is exemplary and um you know, we're going to have a discussion as uh director silver said is it, is there any way that the arts commission can um you know do more than just spread the word i mean i think at the very least it is our our duty and responsibility to find through whatever our own personal um networks to uh get people to know about this show to get this show to have perhaps a a larger um, acknowledgement than it might normally get. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes there seems to be a bit of a, a bias in the art press towards um, educational galleries, which is ridiculous. And we can do. And is there anything even more? Is there anything that this body of thinkers and creatives can um, imagine that can support um, what is going to be one of the best shows of the season here in Santa Monica? With that, yeah, I, you know, she's. She just finished a collaboration with National Geographic. She's releasing a blanket with REI in the spring. So there's a lot happening around her right now because of and her vision and way that she um, deals with her subjects, right? She gives them agency. It's about their story and who they are. And then she captures their photograph depending on how they want to be seen and postured. She doesn't sell the work either for any of that um, like the typical way in which a gallery works to, you know, make money off the image. She doesn't believe that that's fair to, to the subjects in which she's taking. So um, her really, her mission is that we don't ignore the Native uh, folks around us, right? And that we start to have these bigger questions and bigger conversations. So I think any way that we can um, have activations, workshops, or, um, you know, have the work 
activate other spaces beyond Santa Monica College so that there can be more dialogue would be would be awesome. Uh, it's also so student driven and collaborative that I think it would be really amazing for them to be able to experience something and see it grow, right? See a city catch on to it and then see it kind of like catch on as a bigger shift and change. Fantastic. Are there any thoughts, uh, questions? Uh, let's let's have a discussion. Question? Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, Here, Mark, call on me. Michael has got a question and a comment. Yes, please go. Yeah. Um, first of all, will you be pushing out all the public relations materials to us so we have that on hand so we can disseminate it as needed? And how long will the show be in the gallery itself? The show goes up until May. Oh, through mm -hmm. the whole time. Great. Yeah, so it's a whole year. It'll shift and change. Um, I just did a show in the spring with the Prison Art Collective, and that was all about art and transformation. Um, and so that exhibition did something very similar where it shifted over time. So it won't ever be the same, right? It won't just, it's like a living gallery. That's how I imagine the space working. Um, I will definitely send you the press release. And uh, we, I just created a new website that's not the SMC school website. It's a separate entity. Um, so there'll be stuff on there that's updated. I you thought know. it, I mean, we've had wonderful events in our local Tongva Park, right, Nathan? You've coordinated that. So is there any thoughts already about staging something for the community some weekend or evening? Yeah, we'd love to do something at Tongva Park and maybe even get one of these photo cubes there it would be great. The students are supposed to go on a photo shoot up in Wishtoya. Um, they just went to a, um, uh, in El Sereno, they were invited to a song festival for Tongva and Chumash community. And now they're invited to a photo shoot up in Wishtoya and Malibu. So um, I think any of anything that we can do like that would be fantastic. Incredible. Um, since this uh, interface that we have limits my ability to see most of you. I would just ask you to uh, sort of just speak up. Um, I saw that Deepa did have a question. I saw that uh, Laurie has a question, but if anyone else is, just please, um, uh, let's, and then I see Gwendas. So please, uh, Deepa first. Yeah, so um, I, I've been to Barrett Gallery a few times, and I think it's one of the best galleries in Santa Monica. So to start with, I would like to say that, you know, this has to be, a, Emily, this has to be a continuous process and not just a one-off collaboration with the Arts Commission. I think, uh, I mean, being part of the, uh, you know, city, city, I think we need to have a lot more uh, engage, engaging shows uh, with uh, the Commission and, of course, the City of Santa Monica. So, uh, also, uh, you know, since it's summer and summer is coming to an end and everyone is at the beach, uh, you know, if we can have a, an event, uh, a, a collateral event at the pier or the beach, a musical, uh, you know, event which can, music art kind of an event which can actually garner a lot of uh, publicity and, you know, people will, Will like that kind of an engaging. Um, I wish I'd seen. Um, I'll I'll come by and see the works. I didn't get a chance to see the art show, but um, I'm just thinking aloud. Um, I mean, instantly how to put this out in the market. So, yeah, you should. I mean, we just kind of opened, and we had a video tech issue, so it, the video hasn't even played yet. So you're not missing. You haven't missed it yet. It's on the. But I would, I mean, I just came into this position in December, so I'm definitely open to collaborating a lot more, for sure. I love that idea. And also we can have a, a, a you know, collaborate for the opening, the closing, and if you have any collateral events during the course of the uh, the whole show, that will mm -hmm. be, that'll be a, also a potentially a good uh, way to engage with uh, the city. So, Commissioner, uh, yeah, yeah, but first I'd like to interrupt and say that um, there's another um, member of the Santa Monica College community that um, was also going to be part of tonight, but he, he was having tech issues, and I think he uh, he deserves some acknowledgement, and he's a he's an alum of this body. So, uh, 
Walter Meyer is the chair of the art history department at Santa Monica College, and um, I had the privilege of working with him um, during the last few years of his tenure. He was the vice chair of the Arts Commission, and he served as the chair of the Public Art Committee, and he um, got my feet wet in the Public Art Committee, and um, when he stepped down, um, I assumed that chair. And um, uh, he's, he's a, an amazing voice in the community, and uh, uh, he's a principal within the, uh, Santa Monica, the, the Southern California Art Historians Association, and um, We've spoken at panels in New York at the national conferences, and he's a. Uh, I'm I'm sorry he's not joining us tonight, but um, we have met about. There does need to be much more of a communication, two-way, open channel between SMC and the Arts Commission, and uh, we've already begun to imagine how that can be. So I, I'm sorry, I just needed to you know reference him because he would have been joining us, and I'll stop interrupting, please, Commissioner Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I, I want to say that I did I did have the opportunity to see the exhibit um, with Walter Meyer, and um, it's fabulous. The whole pro the whole program is really amazing, and it's quite a coup that you have her here. So I want to say congratulations to you, Emily. Um, it's it's the scope of the project is you know it, it's hard to get a sense of um, in such a quick presentation, but it involves every indigenous tribe in the country, as, as I understand it. And the college, I think, is doing a spectacular job of involving students at all levels, from curating part of the show to doing framing and um, design and, and printing of, of the large scale photos. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's very, it's very impressive program. Um, I think there are many ways that we can collaborate. So um, I look forward to that. I think Tonga is a natural. I think our city hall is a natural. We're we're in the midst of issues there that this could really benefit that whole conversation in terms of how how we look at our history with indigenous folks. So there are many things we can do. We can do panels. Um, it would be interesting to do uh, I don't know if there's contact with any of the subjects of the photos who would be interested in participating in a panel or if we could show. Anyway, there, we could do a lot of brainstorming. So I just think it's important to know that we're not only open, we're very enthusiastic. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Commissioner. I know Gwen had a, a thought. I know he had a chance for a while yeah. ago. So I think what's interesting about Southern California is obviously there is a very large contingent of indigenous people that have worked and lived in this place before we've known it. So it's almost like this uh, geological thing where you have to go down to find out what's happened. And I think people are just unaware of the extent. I happen to have a, a mountain cabin up in the Los Padres National Forest like near Mount Pinos which of course is the center of the Chumash world. But wouldn't it be lovely if we could have uh, the experience of, of meeting some of these people uh, and, and uh, having some kind of interaction here in Santa Monica, or maybe have it in such a way that it encourages people to go to ceremonies or events or meetings with, because that's just an hour and a half away, for instance, for the Chumash, and I know the Tonga are around. So it'd be great if somehow that that sort of layer of society, a layer of our history, the layer is sort of surfaced uh, in a tangible way. Um, and I know to some extent that's what it's about, but really having that so that, that people interact with that in a way that rather than going to an event, it sort of comes to them. Yeah, I, I mean, the root of her work is about shifting that one dimensional narrative we have around native culture and native heritage and and the imagery that's inherently racist. And so, um, and she started as an educator. So uh, including local communities is definitely would be great. She did wanna try and plan a big a canoe event um, 
where the tribes were able to come in through the through the ocean into the pier. Um, it's uh, because of COVID stuff, it was really difficult for us to even plan that in the winter. But um, I could definitely talk to her about that as well, because it would be pretty epic at the pier. Um, but yeah, these are all great, definitely engaging with local folks. Hi, I lost everybody completely for a few minutes. So if any of this is a repeat, I apologize. Um, two things in communications wise. One, uh, if we can all opt in to any besides just getting the PR stuff, but any sort of future communications that we get, because we are still perfecting ways that the commissioners find out about things sort of in real time and, and um, before things close and that kind of thing. I know you're not closing till May, but like I'm signing myself up to please let us know continuously. And then I'm wondering if uh, it sounds like you guys and the artists are very engaged with um, so many of the uh, Native tribes, but I, I would say that coming from a corporate background, there's so much DEAI work right now um, that I think finding a way to let a lot of the Los Angeles uh, and Santa Monica companies know about this with like a DEAI perspective for employees and that kind of thing, that that might be a hook that's more than just art locally and supporting Santa Monica College, that kind of thing, that might be a way to do it. Um, you're probably, and in, in the artist is probably connected to, I was on a call last week with the, there's a LA County and City Joint um, Indigenous Peoples Commission so they do work. So if you're not already connected to them, then working with them, um, Kristen Sakota and team at the LA County uh, Department of Cultural Arts um, is also doing work on land acknowledgements um, and trying to find a way to get that out countywide to anyone interested in doing it. So that's an even larger group of people than corporations working on DEAI. I think you have such a phenomenal um, thing to share and that there might be interesting ways to share it wider than we normally would, you know, for a local, just have a much wider reach that we, maybe we can help find ways to get it out there. Yeah, it would be awesome. That would be great, I, yeah. I have I a thought. Um, I'm wondering if um, a possible next step, if anyone wants to consider, you know, moving this and, and seconding, perhaps the idea of maybe an ad hoc should be convened that um, some representatives of both PAC and the Arts Commission could be part of that could begin, um, you know, on a semi-regular basis, a communication with Santa Monica College. And uh, because I don't think we're going to tonight figure out all the possible ways that things might happen, but maybe what we need to do is, is uh, you know, as semi-formalize an open channel that can begin a number of different ways that um, over the months and hopefully years ahead that um, uh, all of these amazing cultural institutions within our city can, you know, have a open and we get to know each other and we get to imagine what's going on. Uh, I'm wondering if anybody thinks that's uh, viable. I'm happy to meet regularly too if you need me to be scheduled in on things. I, I'm already working on the calendar through 2025 and with some collaboration with Bro, Road Stage as well. So uh, I'm happy to, if that helps, I'm one person and there's a lot of you for me to just show up to things as well. I can also do that if you, if that helps. But that's, anyway. big help. that's, a, that's a, you know, I, I think um there's been too much siloing. There's, uh, you know, there's, there's, such a wealth of cultural treasure within this city and a lot of times um we speak to our own communities and, and we don't speak enough to each other so any and all ways that that can be lubricated i think is is great i think tonight's a step i think tonight is a very real step towards opening that and um and i i thank walter actually for really you know um having you know been open to uh to even this, uh, this initial discussion. So maybe it's, okay, go ahead, Deepa. Yeah, Michael, that's a good idea. If that's, uh, if, if you're planning an ad hoc, I, I'm happy to be part of it. And incidentally, I also ha ha exchanged cards with Walter a couple of months ago, and he did mention 
Emily, he did mention your name. And I was, when I saw you, I was like, this name rings a bell. Um, I, I didn't get a chance to connect back with you, but I will shortly. But yeah, uh, back to Michael, I think it's a great idea. And, you know, best way to sort of put, uh, get this on board by involving a few people who can be, you know, meaningfully uh, taking this forward. Well, well, Deepa, if you're willing to second, I'm, I'm Michael, happy. To Michael, make Michael, go ahead. Michael, yeah. sorry, uh, we're a little far off the Brown Act right now. This wasn't agendized, the formation of a standing committee. So I might suggest that we um, kind of think through if, if this is going to be a standing committee or if it's ad hoc. It seems a little too non-topic focused to be an ad, an ad hoc. So I think we need to do a little more of work, but what I think might be the good first step would be to have our mural ad hoc committee interface with this group because that already exists. Great um, idea. And while we while we work on the a larger kind of plan, because I agree that it's a good plan. I just think we we need to do a little work first. Sounds good. All right. With that, um, I think we're going to close this aspect and and go to uh, um, Naomi Akin, um Akunat Yama, who's uh, with Cultural Affairs, the Public Art Supervisor, and she's going to present their budget review for uh, 22-23. So, uh, Naomi? Thank you, Michael. I think Shannon had a couple more things to say. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of remind everyone where what this process is and what um, where we're at. Uh, as many of you know, we've been bringing um, the budgets up to date with you. Um, the last meeting, the Public Art Committee met for our practice to review the draft and give feedback and ask questions that we could then update the, the document uh, for discussion tonight. Um, how tonight is going to go after the uh, Naomi's presentation and discussion is the Public Art Committee will first act to make a recommendation to the Arts Commission to approve or not approve the agenda. And then the Arts Commission will then take up that recommendation and act uh, on the this agenda. So that's the flow of how things will, will go. And so just wanted to remind everyone it can get a little complicated and confusing, uh, especially because we, we haven't seen this in a, in a while or been through this specific process. So uh, with that, Naomi, off to you. Thank you, Shannon. Okay, um, well, I'll start with some apologies to the Public Art Committee because this is quite a bit of repetition from my June presentation. But uh, the report that you reviewed in your packets today presents the proposed percent for art allocations for fiscal year 22-23 and an overview of both completed and upcoming public art program activities. And as Shannon noted, to recap, we've been gradually getting back on track with the budget review process, and we've previously reviewed our recent fiscal years uh, percent for art projects and conservation projects. So please note that the fiscal year 22 to 23 budget represents projects that are scheduled to take place over several fiscal years. So we have that total project budget that includes actual budgeted and forecasted expenditures and that some of these projects are enhanced or supercharged, as the case may be, with non-percent for art funds. Uh, so onward, our Acknowledge and Reframe Together initiative was created this year uh, as an umbrella for public art and civic memory projects, and Belmar History and Art is now retroactively considered a reframe project. We've just completed production of the on-site uh, site guide stations on the outside and inside of the multipurpose sports field, and we wrapped up um, production of our final education elements, including an activity booklet produced by artist April Banks and uh, Belmar workshop leader Susu Atar. Um, and that should be all completed, as you'll see in the budget. Um, light paintings by Susan Narduli Studio. Uh, scoping for that newly uh, new city services building, which is now called City Hall East, that artwork began in 2018 with $760,000 in percent for art funds generated based on the construction budget for that one. Uh, in April of 2020, we installed Light Paintings 2, which is the art glass screen behind the permit counter on the first floor of City Hall East. 
um, and that was just after the onset of the pandemic in April. Installation of light paintings one in the south stairwell of City Hall East has been delayed by multiple factors. Um, and these delays have increased spending on the project, $200,000, now anticipated to be around $960,000. We're very glad to have a contract now with the selected installation contract with AP Construction now in progress. And they've recently installed the Crying Rock in St. Monica on 4th Street for Metro, so we're very excited to have them coming on board shortly. Installation is anticipated for this winter. Uh, reframe City Hall mural. In 2018-19, the Public Art Committee and Arts Commission approved a five-item list of actions to address the McDonald Wright mural in historic City Hall. And since the completion of Belmar, uh, this work, with guidance from the mural subcommittee, has been renewed. City Hall mural project has been broken up into two phases. Phase one will include the panel series and participatory engagement work, for which we are currently in a contracting process with Netsy project. Um, phase two will include the commissioning of new public artwork. Metzley is anticipated to begin work this fall. Total budget for both phase one and two for this project is projected to be just over $672,000, which includes approximately $575,000 in non-percent for art funds. So the percent for art funds being allocated in this 22-23 budget include the initial 71,000 allocation approved back in 2019 and an additional 30,000 to support the phase one community engagement process that we're now developing with Nextly. And then our city yards is the last major project um, we're working on right now. The percent for art allocation for our city yards is $500,000 and will be split between an artist residency with the resource recovery and recycling division and an invitational public art commission. So prospectuses for these are currently being drafted. Our next section is administrative and support services. Public art program engagement activities, including artwork identification plaques, documentation, and support for our online public art archive are included in the line item. Um, projected documentation costs for 22-23 uh, is a little bit higher because it includes, among other items, our contract with artist Manfred Mueller to create a documentary about his deaccession work, Twilight and Yearning, and he's just begun to uh, start that work. And next section is collection care projects, which encompasses uh, collection services consultants, accession and deaccession removals, framing services, routine cleaning and maintenance of the collection, and storage of the art bank. Collection. So we have some ongoing cleaning and refurbishment projects in 2223 that account for most of the amounts shown. Uh, the Municipal Art Bank Collection for newer members of the Public Art Committee and Arts Commission, we invite you to experience the collection online at Public Art Archive and also in person at the Lives That Bind exhibit in City Hall East and the temporary exhibit that's now down at the Annenberg Community Beach House. No new purchases are contemplated uh, for the art bank in 22-23, but some reframing costs for the collection is anticipated. We have a uh, RFQ for public art and collections management consultants that's currently in progress with the aim of creating a pre-qualified list of consultants to call upon for collection management and uh, project administrative support. Um, and a new art services provider RFQ uh, is also in progress with the goal of creating a pre-qualified list of conservation and art handling and information companies. And this will assist in increasing capacity to undertake conservation projects. Um, for your information, a brief forecast of non-percent for art funded conservation projects was also included in the packet. And please note that the implementation of these projects are dependent on capacity and securing uh, consultants through the procurement process. Our priority projects uh, forecasted include Jody Pinto's big project, Beacon Overlook on Ocean Avenue in California Incline, which we've mentioned um, over the past few years. Uh, it's still on the docket. It re does require extensive refurbishment and repair uh, of the lighting function. And Bill and Mary Buchan's children's play area, which requires general upkeep, repainting, repair of features, and um, 
testing and application of new anti-graffiti coatings to several murals, which are larger projects as well. Um, we have some other routine maintenance and spot conservation, um, which is anticipated pending assessments for a variety of works. That includes Chain Reaction, Children's Mural, Dinosaurs of Santa Monica, Montana Ridge, Murals at the Main Library, Our Pico Neighborhood, Singing Beach Chairs, Wheels, and the untitled works by Mark Lear and Mauro Stazioli. Other public art activities, I'm just gonna go very quickly through these items. Um, we have uh, work on the development of initiatives that integrate the arts into civic life in Santa Monica. Some examples of which are the artist roster, temporary art permit, utility box art program, etc. We have a private developer cultural arts requirement um, and the current projects include 500 Broadway, 1550, 1560 Lincoln, 1640 14th Street, and 1650 Euclid Street. So these four projects are um, top of mind. The installation of Lynch by David Cerny at 1560 Lincoln is nearing completion. And if you drive by there, it's wrapped up in a big tarp. Um, the project Split Stone by Sarah Z at 500 Broadway is also nearing the installation phase. And we got an update from their curator that notes that the granite rock and granite pavers, which um, people had inquired about, came from a quarry in Virginia. And also folks had inquired about the photograph that they're utilizing um, as the pixelated image embedded in that granite. And it was taken at Santa Monica Beach uh, on April 22nd, 2021. Um, and we're right now reviewing the maintenance and accessibility covenants for both those projects. And let's see, we are also currently in discussions with the city attorney's office to update the various municipal codes and resolutions. We outline um, the part parameters of the percent for art on the private percent for art program. So this includes an establishment of fee, fee rates, which were set in 2006 and are due to be increased. And that would result in an increase in private development fees, which would go to support public art. Um, further information we will be sharing with you as the planning advances. Um, another pro uh, project to note that we are not heading up, um, Public Works is heading up the fencing of the PNG LNG fueling station at the corner of Olympic and Fifth. Um, that fencing in project is planned for execution the fall of this year, um, and it's designed to enhance security around this fueling station. Unfortunately, that action will reduce the accessibility to the public artwork by Richard Wyatt Jr., uh, the granite wall and the glass canopy over the fueling station. So we're consulting with public works on uh, signage to partially mitigate this reduction. We've also done some documentation of the work um, and enriched the images available on public art archive online. The artist has been notified of these fencing. Uh, we did a pilot of the temporary art permit, um, taking many months of planning and interdivisional work. We now have an online um, process to address and facilitate the review and permitting of temporary art installations, such as that, um, that work that um, Ms. Silver noted, the um, pop-up type of thing. So we have a process that we can address these um, proposals. And just to finish up, another plug for our Art Bank collection exhibit down at the Beach House. Um, please do take a look at it. It's also available online on Public Art Archive. Um, we created a page just for that exhibit. And actually, this rem reminds me that we created a page just for Belmar on Public Art Archive as well. So take a look at that if you haven't. Uh, so moving on to the recommendation. Staff recommends that the Public Art Committee move to recommend the Arts Commission approve the FY2223 Public Art Plan. Staff further recommends that the Arts Commission accept the Public Art Committee's recommendation and either approve or disapprove the budget. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Naomi. So now uh, we will have the Public Art uh, Committee convene and discuss. So, uh, Commissioner Yea. 
Hello, everyone. Hello, public art committee members. Um, let's start with any questions or comments on the budget, the proposed budget for the percent for art funds. One half well, I just I make a okay. recommendation. Uh, the, uh, the, commendation to the staff. This is such a wide variety of projects and it just runs through everything that we do in Santa Monica and it's just wonderful to see. So uh, thank you for the hard work being put behind all of this. Thank you, Gwen. Any other comments, questions? We reviewed it uh, last month. We had some questions. Did everyone's questions get answered? Do you remember what they were? Um, let's see here. Okay. All right, would what anyone- What were those questions? you remember, Lori? I'm trying to remember what they were. Um, I was looking for my notes. Um, There weren't a lot of questions from what I recall. We didn't have, no. we didn't update this too much. There weren't a lot of questions, just a couple of what they were. Um, the format looks a little different, so I'm just sort of reviewing. Okay, so the total budget, we didn't really go through the numbers at all. Um, can I ask a question then? It's kind of a, almost. Yes. A, I'm curious, um, Naomi Shannon. I mean, regarding the um, city hall, I guess Eastley installation, given that it's still in progress, um, has there been any other further you know, discussion, feedback from our city council members who've had issues with that in, that installation? Is it is everything kind of all settled out? So it's just a matter of getting the installation done in the the right way, so to speak. Uh, we did get one query months and months ago uh, asking about the status of it because it hasn't been installed yet. And we addressed that question and haven't heard anything. Thank you. And the increased budget is that are those funds all coming from percent for arts or we we do we have funds coming from any other source for that project it's all percent for art it's the <laughs> belmar and the city hall mural that has gotten a million dollars in public work and i will note that uh we've changed the the a bit of the structure this is noted um we used to pull out money uh, a percentage from every percent for art that was generated, it would be a pool of money for things like installation. And so it would cover overages because you've got this pot of money that you can draw from. So it's kind of six, one, half dozen, but we, we felt it was more clear to put, keep all of the money with a project rather than apportioning out part of it. Plus the city's accounting system didn't really know what to do with how we were wanting to do it. So. Yeah, yeah, that's it's a, that that was clear. Thank you, Shannon. Okay, um, would anyone like to move to make a re recommendation to the Arts Commission to accept the? Yeah, I'll, make I'll, I'll, move, I'll move to make a recommendation. Thank you, Francois. So uh, Francois moved and is that Gwen or Jeff? Yes, I had. Yeah. Gwen. Okay, and Gwen. Yeah, for recommendation to the Art Commission. Mm-hmm. So, so. Okay. Um. Uh. This is Nathan. I think we do a roll call vote. Is that correct? Yeah. You know me? Yes. yes. Oh, Lori. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. So the motion was by Barr and seconded by Pew to recommend to the Commission Public Art Budget. Um. We'll begin. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go uh, reverse alphabetical. Uh, um, member Subramanian? Yes. Uh, member Vaughn is absent. Member Doherty is absent, I believe. 
Member Pugh? Yes. Committee Member Gittleman? Absent. Committee Member Barr? Yes. Committee Member Baroff? Yes. And Chair Yeya? Yes. Motion passes. Unanimously. Unanimously. Thank you so much, Public Art Committee. And um, we will now take your unanimous vote and uh, consider it among the, uh, the Arts Commissioners. Thank you so much. Um, so, Commissioners, as you've heard, the Public Art Committee has unanimously recommended the approval of um, the percentage for art budget um, for fiscal year 22-23. Are there any questions or discussions from the Commissioners? Uh, Jeff, did I see you you trying to talk? No. Okay, since I can't see every battery protest. Yeah, I actually I actually have a question. So because this is the first time I hear about the public art commission, and I see that you know it's kind of stack it stacks with the art commission, you know, when it comes to to people and votes. Like, can, can someone give me like a brief, like, you know, story about, you know, the public art commission or certainly we don't yeah. go through it but as long as someone sends me an email with, with all the details of, of the public art commission, that would be appreciated. Well, well, let me, let me briefly introduce you. It's the public art committee. The public art committee is a standing subcommittee of the arts commission. However, in addition to several commissioners being on it, it is also um, involving experts from the community. So not everyone on the Public Art Committee is in the Arts Commission as you now are, Commissioner. However, the Public Art Committee is a standing subcommittee within the Arts Commission. So um, you can think of uh, them really as being one body. However, the um, as you'll hear in my report in a few minutes, there are several subcommittees within the Arts Commission. Each of them is allowed to bring on people who are not commissioners. Um, so I don't know, that's a brief introduction, but the Public Art Committee, obviously, by its name, um, it is focused and, and tasked with being concerned about the um the public works uh that are cultural within the city however they also have a unique fiscal and fiduciary responsibility is in that they are tasked and empowered to um consider the budgetary considerations uh whereas um most of the other um, subcommittees are not so tasked so the public art committee is um arguably the the most important of the subcommittees within the Arts Commission. And most commissions will have subcommittees and almost invariably they will contain non-commissioners among their experts. Does that help? Uh, yes. And uh, is, uh, is the Public Art Committee also uh, a volunteer position? Yes. yes. All, all, all of these um, committees are pro bono, unpaid, um, the commissioners, as as you know, um, through your the introductions you're, you're being given, um, have certain conflict of interest and ethical restrictions, and so they cannot profit directly from from things. The um, volunteers they could perhaps um, apply for grants. Um, there are certain recusal issues. I mean, uh, there's a lot of um, of codified language and, and knowledge about what can and can be done, but all of these are pro bono volunteers. And Michael, could I just uh, supplement that a little bit? Um, thank you. And just uh, Frederico, because um, you came on, we haven't had a lot of time between when you came on in this meeting, we haven't had a chance to orient you properly with all of the, the policies and procedures and the role of a subcommittee and things like that. So that is, that is going to be coming your way, so you won't be as in the dark as you might feel right now. All right, thank you. Looking forward. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, Commissioner. You know, we, I'll just say briefly, um, the the beginnings of any onboarding of a commission is it, there's a learning curve. So um, there will be there will be things. Part of this will be learn as you go. Part of it will be 
handed to you in, in various documentation. Um, a lot of what the, um, the, the legacy people on the, the commission um, need to do is, is kind of a, you know, take the new, new blood by the hand and, and kind of, you know, help them as they can. But a lot of this, you hit the ground running, and you'll learn fast. But yes, there will be language that will be given to you. But uh, any questions, you know, reach out. We're, we're here. And, and Shannon's here. We're all, you know, but it's a, it, it, it's, it's trial by fire. You know, you, you'll, you'll see it as it goes. So commissioners, any, any uh, questions or comments regarding the recommendation from public art? No, but I can make a motion to accept it. Absolutely. Please do so. Great. Then I make a motion to accept the Public Arts Committee's recommendation to approve the budget as submitted by staff and any other recommendations. Does anyone wish to second? I'll second it. Second it. Yeah. Okay, excellent. We have a motion. Who's the seconder? Who's the seconder? No. Who else? Someone else said it. You can, the other person can be the seconder. I think yeah. it was Jack. Yeah, yeah, I did the second. Uh, Jeff, okay, thank you. And so now, since this is a, a budgetary item, we will have a roll call vote. Very good. Um, again, in reverse alphabetical order, uh, Commissioner Yeya? Yes. Commissioner Swimmer? Yes. Commissioner Subramanian? Yes. Commissioner Michaels? Yes. Commissioner Galavis? I haven't had time enough to like review the whole budget and proposals that I got it so late. But uh, so in this case, you know, like I'll, I'll, you know, can I just abstain from voting? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Commissioner Chalice? Yes. Vice Chair Barra? Yes. Right, yeah. And Chair Masucci? Yeah, yes, I say, yeah. Yeah, I, I say yes now. <laughs> Very good. Oh, well, do. Right. Okay, we got. Okay, good. That's everybody. So, thank, thank you. you. It passes. Motion passes. Much, um, uh, Naomi and 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 colleagues. Um, amazing work. Uh, congratulations as always, and um, on with uh all the good things that are are, are being developed by you, and uh, we look forward to the uh, unveilings and openings of many of these things. Um. Uh, yes, please, Deepa. Uh, I was a little off the subject, but Naomi, I wanted to interrupt at that point, but um, I was walking down the beach, and I think the Santa Monica installation, the the main one on Wilshire, has, a, has quite a number of graffiti, you know, writings on it. And I thought, you know, considering the statue of that uh, installation, uh, they should uh, do something to conserve the, restore the, uh, artwork. Any... Thank you, Deepa. Which artwork is that? The Santa Monica statue, right? In oh, Santa Monica, Wilshire yes. And uh, Wilshire. Got it. Thank you. Yes, um, it's often, I know, I notice pencil marks. Is there now paint as well? It's not just, a, uh, you know, it's it's got graffiti, you know, people writing on it and I don't know what it is, but I spotted at least, uh, you know, three or four places where it needs to be restored. Not Thank you. Bring it to your attention. Thank you. Thanks. Well, thank you. And um, now the next, uh, the next item will be uh, the approval of the minutes from the last uh, special uh, meeting, which was June 27th. I, uh, for anyone who was in attendance of that meeting, you you are eligible to vote on it. And if you've had a chance to look over the notes, and uh, if anyone, um, you know, we can simply approve this by acclamation. There's there's no need for uh, individual. So, uh, does anyone wish to move on the minutes to approve? I move to approve the minutes from our last meeting. I'll second. <laughs> um, 
So by um, acclamation, all in favor of approval, say aye. 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 All those, aye. aye. Uh, anyone uh, who uh, wishes not to approve, say aye. Sounds we like need, uh, need, they, would say, they would say nay. <laughs> right. Uh, You'll need um, the abstentions for those who weren't at the meeting. Right, right. And obviously, anyone who was not there uh, has voted. Um, all right, so we've dispensed with that. And um, with that, now we're going to move on to more the the um, Arts Commission pure side of this. Um, thank you, everybody, for uh, for the, this discussion. I'm going to begin by um, when a... Commissioner Galavis mentioned the Public Art Committee and asked about it. Um, what, what I'd like to talk about tonight briefly is the value of the subcommittees and um, how really as commissioners, the, the best way you can exercise your voice is by serving on one or more, hopefully not all, but, um, but on a one or two, perhaps, um, of these subcommittees. And uh, uh, most of you know what they are, but I'm just going to go through it for, for um, those who may not remember and, and certainly for um, Commissioner Galavis. So you have been introduced to the Public Art Committee. It is, um, as I said, a standing committee, which has a slightly different um, rigor to it than an ad hoc. Ad hocs are, are less formalized, but 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 equally empowered with important considerations. So at the moment, there is the Public Art Committee, which is a standing committee. Then there are several ad hocs. There's the Bergamont Ad Hoc Committee. Um, there's a Media Arts um, Ad Hoc Committee. And there's a Mural Committee, which is tasked with a very, very important function that will ultimately go beyond the, the controversy of the city hall um, mosaic. And, um, and what these different committees do is they, they do the deep dive. They, um, they ask the questions, they meet with the community experts. When relevant, they meet with the community at large and they, they take the temperature and they come back to the Arts Commission with recommendations. Um, in the case of public art, as I said, they have a unique function in that they have a fiduciary um, and they have a financial um, function, but all of these committees are important. And um, in the, the next meeting and the meeting after, um, one, of, one of my roles as chair is to um, appoint the members and, and, and the, the way I do it is based on who wants to be on a committee. I'm not going to put you on a committee you don't want to be on. Um, but I do ask that you all serve on at least one. And if you have preferences, please let myself or Shannon know. And we will do everything we can to try to equitably um, put people where they want to be and where they can best serve. Obviously, if you have bona fides and expertise in specific areas, it's a no-brainer, that's where you would best serve. But if you simply have an interest and are willing to learn and are willing to like, you know, listen and, and explore together, then even if you have no experience in a certain area, you perhaps will make a contribution. So um, that's really where I'm, I'm gonna be for now because what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our committee um, updates for several of them. And I will point out, in addition to the Arts Commission um, subcommittees, there's another affiliated but, but um, legally separate um, institution, which is run by um, Commissioner Swimmer um, the, uh, and, and overseen again by Shannon, and that's the Santa Monica Arts Foundation. And the Arts Foundation is tasked um, with the exploration of ways to um, fund or serve as fiscal receiver or find perhaps strategic partners for bringing um, the much needed revenues to the bona fide projects that, that need to happen. And uh, 
perhaps if, if Jeff wants to speak for a minute and during these committee updates, it's not on the agenda, but just maybe to say um, in a better way than I've just explained what that is, that's another potential place where um, there there is some um, Arts Commission representation. But first, I'm going to go to uh, Laurie again, who chairs public art. And if there's anything else um, you'd, you would like to say about public art committee or, or its um, recent uh, activities. Well, we really haven't had any additional activities since our last meeting when we reviewed the, uh, the budget. And I am really looking forward to um, being able to have more active meetings. And one thing that I had in mind that we've talked about on and off um, is uh, when we'll be able to do another retreat with the Public Art Committee and the Arts Commission. And I think it's really time to think about coming back from the, um, from the pandemic and how we can start to revitalize what we're doing. Anyway, um, thank you. And just so you know, there we are still waiting to onboard one more commissioner. There is there is a vacancy, um, and and uh, what Shannon and and I and I um, I think uh, leadership was involved in this discussion months ago is that when we are fully convened as a as a body, when we have onboarded the the next commissioner, then um, then we will start to imagine, it would, realistically, it would probably be early next year, um, a retreat. I, I, yeah. I share your your um, desire. We we yeah. do need this, but but it, but well, let's. It, it's a new wait for absolutely, her. we have yeah. to have the the uh, commission and the committees uh, formed and the officers elected. Um, one thing also for the public art committee is. Uh, I've spoken with Shannon about this. Um, the commission is smaller now because of the city council's decision to shrink the size of it. And so accordingly, the public art committee will probably need to be downsized also. So we need to think about, and the public art committee members, to think about, you know, who has not been attending meetings, who has not been involved, um, whether that would be possibly a criteria for um, helping us make some of those choices. So just to let people start thinking about that. Michael, Baroff? In, um, yeah, not about public art, about um, commissions and uh, committees in general, if I may. Yeah, Michael, to augment um, your excellent um, overview of committees, one other thing. It behooves any commissioner to propose a committee, correct? So if, if a commissioner has an idea Absolutely. Absolutely. for a committee, that, that, that could be brought to the commission and we would vote to approve it as a another ad hoc. So committees can expand based on what's going on in the community or uh, an idea. So, you know, please consider that. So not, it's not limited is what we're saying. <laughs> That's absolutely correct. Um, I, I would just uh, give the caveat that um, we, we would want to make sure that that new, new onboarded com, um, committees are not, you know, adding to the workload of, of staff. So, uh, staff is not required to to um, participate in in all of the the committees, but there are some that that by nature of of the tasks they they do, staff must be involved. And um, and so as we as we think about expansion, we have to think about all the pragmatics. But yes, absolutely, Michael. Um, let let's let's um let's let's imagine. Let's let's start imagining. Um, what this what this can be. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk briefly about the uh, Bergamot ad hoc. So um, many of you know one of the the cultural treasures of of Santa Monica is this amazing piece of land that the city owns, um, and uh, and partially adjacent to it is is land that's privately owned. 
but that collectively is the Bergamont Art Center, and it's been around for many years. There have been many amazing moments in uh, not just Santa Monica art history, but but some would dare to say world art history. And um, Santa Monica um, has been told by by Sacramento that it needs to um, uh, understandably increase the the um, accessibility of housing within its its city borders, and um, and so there is a the beginnings of a reimagining of Bergamont um, Art Center, which will at some point in the future um, include housing. There are a number of planning meetings that are going to be um, done. Um, specifics are, are really in the most rudimentary stage, and there is much more unknown than un, than is known. But the Bergamont um, ad hoc uh, committee will be tasked with a number of functions. Most most commonly, its function has been um, on the approval of new new tenants, um, but but it, it will in the in the months and years ahead hopefully have other other functions. Now, one thing that is very much in the planning, um, hopefully next month, the um, the subcommittee will be meeting with the uh, members the, of the Bergamon community, the uh, gallerists, the tenants, the employees, and there will be um, a discussion. And uh, we'll hear what they have to say, and um, and we will include it in our in our considerations. Um, there is a planning session also that's going to be happening. That's much broader um, about about housing, not so much the cultural aspects. Um, that um, we'll be getting feedback from the community that we are not officially involved in. Um, so that's what's going on with with Bergamont. Um, Michael, do you want to talk briefly about the mural committee so that uh, Commissioner Galavis has a sense of that? Um, okay, so you off the top of my head. Um, yeah, we've been meeting, you know, for quite a while, and kind of the group that things kept evolving. And where it's at now is, um, I think both Shannon and Naomi alluded to in the in the budget presentation, a consulting um, consortium or group of individuals who are well um, vetted and became, you know, uh, top contenders for the um, work of of implementing the at least the first phase of the project, which is now in motion, is to engage the community at large in getting input, stories, and the like for people's um, responses. Again, this all has to do, with, just to reiterate, about the two murals that exist in City Hall that um, were created in 1930s by Stanford McDonald Wright uh, under the Work Progress Administration. One features the um, indigenous people along with conquistadors and Franciscan monks and you know, problematic um, interpretation. So we, we've, we will keep learning about that. The other mural takes another stance, which is showing people playing polo and yachting and living the good life, which was another reality that was presented. You know, likewise, perhaps problematic because, I mean, the issue at hand is how will people feel comfortable entering a public building, the city's building, to do um, activities related to their work as, as residents to come to the city and feel included and not excluded by the visuals that um, are currently present. So that's the context. You may be well aware of this already, but that's the context. And now we're in the process of A, engaging community, and then moving toward um, recommendations for um, how to I like to we use the word um, reframe, reframe the imagery. So as an educational um, process, so people understand what they're looking at and, and get some context for that. And then also ex expanding the artworks that would be present in City Hall to be, as we continue to do, and you can see many works already in City Hall, more inclusive, 
you know, and people feeling that they feel represented in um, coming to the city hall to do their personal or, or business business. I think that's kind of the nutshell of it. So, thank you, Michael. Yeah, um, sure. I'll, as we need to move along, I'll just briefly. Um, so the media arts uh, committee um, will have its next meeting um, on the 20th. Uh, we've been meeting quarterly. Um, we are uh, focused more on how to bring um, uh, decidedly 21st century, uniquely 21st century um, arts practices, uh, along with all of the, the classical and uh, you know the ongoing eternal art forms, um, we're, we're interested in, in uh, discovering what couldn't have been exhibited even 10 years ago, let alone in the 20th century. But we'll be meeting again on, uh, we'll be meeting for the next time um, on the 20th. Yeah, go ahead, Deepa. Michael, I'd like to ask you, what's the current status of the Media Arts Committee um, regard to? Uh... So everyone has, Everyone has confirmed they they wish to remain on board. Um, if there are people who wish to be on it, um, I may need to have somebody step off to bring new people on. Um, the The committee is made up of several commissioners, um, Commissioner Galovitz, just so you know, and um, a, a number of uh, leading artist technologists. Uh, the the gentleman who literally created the world standard for digital color, a woman who has more patents from the MIT Media Lab than any other human being, um, so um, Emmy, Emmy Award winners. So we we have um, volunteer citizens, non-commissioners, who um, have helped uh, define the the digital um, domain, um, and we have commissioners. Um, they have all they have all reached out to me after I you know sort of beefed that no one was responding in a timely manner that they're they're all they all still wish to be on board and so we'll see um, who shows up on the twentieth yes Michael yeah may I ask I know when, when I attended a couple of meetings I'm I'm no longer on the committee but have you reached out to our we talked about Santa Monica College wonderful program in media arts with um, yes um, there to, to engage the students I mean they have all these programs in media. Yes. And yes. Design. So, well, I would, so this, did you get any briefing on any um, connection or liaison with that entity? Yeah. So um, I had reached out uh, originally to Walter Meyer, which is how this whole thing, the the earlier presentation that happened, um, that was a result of I, I reached out to Walter because I had known him. Uh, he sort of helped me cut my teeth on this, and um, I, I know several of the the faculty at the um, the uh, the college and in uh in in fear of there being a full disclosure of any conflict of interest, um, Santa Monica College is probably going to be doing a major retrospective on EZTV and LFC graphics for our 45th anniversary. So um, in which the all of the students will be involved. I mean, the entire digital arts campus um is being considered being turned into a six month retrospective about our history. So um. Uh, I have to keep that, of course, very separate from the Arts Commission. So, um, so I haven't talked to you about that since that there would be a sort of conflict of interest there. But, um, but the uh, the Digital Arts Center is very interested in, um, and I need to discuss this with the Media Arts Commission of having um, some of the Media Arts Committee people serve as mentors. So um, nothing has been voted on, but they are very, very interested in um, in tapping the talent pool that this um, committee is. But um, I need to get the committee to agree and, and work that out. But, but Santa Monica College really wants to know more about it. Michael, this is Mary Elizabeth. I have a couple questions. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, one, our our committees, both ad hoc and permanent, open to the public to listen into. They are, I mean, in theory, everything, all of these things are open to anyone who wants to see them. So, in theory, yes, um, people could go to them. Okay, um, and then 
part two of that question is specifically regarding the upcoming Bergamot Committee for those people who are for those commissioners um, not on that committee. Is it are, you, are we able to attend, listen in, just as an observer, not as a participant, without well, breaking down at? There have been precedents in the past. There, I mean, I, I I need to get a confirmation from Shannon. That has happened in the past. No one has expressed interest in doing that, but there's so, certainly, you know, in the past it's yeah, happened. Can I clarify? Um, they're actually the ad hoc committees are not um, brown acted. They are not open to the public. That doesn't mean they. Can't public can't come if we don't want, if we want them to come. Um, we need to always, with the Brown Act, ensure that we don't have more than a quorum of arts commissioners assembling to discuss business. So if we had more than um, four commissioners attend an ad hoc committee meeting, that would be in violation of the Brown Act. Okay, so, so I'll reach out to Michael Masucci and Shannon thing to see if I can listen into that meeting. So I mean the meeting with the tenants? Yeah. The intros. Thanks for the clarification, Shannon. There have been instances before your tenure, I I uh, I must claim and I hope I don't get anybody in trouble, where there have been meetings where more than the number of commissioners have shown up, but they have not participated. They just sat there. They didn't talk. Yeah, so, and that was my question. Okay, and I have another question. And we can, sorry, can I just, go, go, I can clarify with the city attorney's office, but um, my, and we've had a lot of standing committees that can have commissioners. So the civic group, there was a Bergamot advisory committee. I don't know if that was a Brown acted body, but there it is, there have been other committees that are public Brown act bodies of the arts commission. So we can get some clarity on that from the city attorney. We'll Thank get you. Thanks, my, second, my second question is, was mentioned in the opening part of this conversation um, regarding the next commissioner. So this goes to our ongoing communication issues. I think it would be really helpful for the current commission to know status of upcoming openings, um, specifically the one that is currently open, when the deadline is, uh, if it's possible for us to, you know, there's, I don't expect additional information from staff. We all know yeah. what the job sure. role is. I mean, that's right. all on the city website. I mean, that is public information. But uh, but perhaps um, you know, we can uh, we can cherry pick all that and 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 send it out to everybody. But that is public knowledge. It's 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 it's, it's available. But um, I, I I certainly I know I don't want to give staff any more things to do. I, I'd certainly be happy to you know go through okay. what's on there and update. I, I, with that and I agree, but I think it comes back to the larger communication conversation that this commission sure. has a lot of work to do. And I think, you know, even if it's me or you, Michael, I think that everybody on the commission should know that there's an open position and when the deadline is in case they want to share information. So I'm not necessarily asking for information, although I kind of am. I can go online and look, but I do think that things like this need to be addressed by the larger commission and shared so that we have more open understanding of what's going on with the larger commission as a whole. Sounds good to me. Uh, that's, a, that's an easy do. That sounds and good. Michael, go ahead. Yeah. Michael, can I just add? Um, so really good point, Mary Elizabeth. Give some folks a sense of history. This, The commissions that the city used to have bodies that would make official recommendations to city council for who they wanted um, to be appointed. And that was done away with before I got here in 2016. So I'm not sure uh, what that is. But that that is does not stop us from telling you that there is an opening and the current opening vacancy that we have, the deadline for applications is September 6th. So I will get that information Thank out you. to you. That's a um, really good point, Mary Elizabeth. Thanks so much. Thank you. Go ahead, Deepa. Uh, so this is related to the question by Commissioner Michael. So Shannon has uh, the other way to do it is uh, how about sharing a, a, the, the recording uh, with the other commissioner, the recording of the proceeding? Of the, of the meeting. Uh, yeah, I'm not, are the committees uh, recorded? That's no, another question. not ad hoc committees. They are not. Or, nor think they are not. They're not recorded? Oh. They are not. Um, and minutes are not not generated. Um, that is 
just the policy, um, but. Well, by May, I think that's another, I think, topic of conversation at some point in the context of new people coming on to any committee to, to catch up on the backstory, the history. So, I mean, I know I've experienced that myself. So, though it may not be policy, I think we need to find ways to informally, you know, document what is being discussed or decided in any committee. So it's at minimum a record for people to, who get appointed to that, such a committee to catch up as opposed to only um, the um, verbal sharing. So perhaps a, a larger conversation, but I... I, I mean, it's, it's easy to do. I mean, what we've done with, with media art since it's ad hoc, we had we have a bit more flexibility. So I have been recording the um, the meetings and anyone who doesn't show up, I've shared them with, but you know, that's not a policy thing. It's just... And if I could speak to the policy quickly, um, with ad hoc committees, ad hoc committees cannot make any decisions unless they're emboldened and, and approved by the Arts Commission. So the Bergamot Ad Hoc Committee could not um, decide on who the developer for Bergamot should be. That would have to come back to the full Arts Commission. Right. So um, I guess that's anything else about them. Um, uh, but this was good, it, especially since we have new blood here. I think it was good to kind of uh, take a walk down memory lane and to kind of flesh out a little bit longer than we usually do with these um, these updates. Um, in lieu of minutes, the way that um, these committees have communicated to the Arts Commission is through these committee reports. That's how it's, it's, it's happened. And they're often never more than a few minutes long because there often isn't all that much development um, meeting to meeting, but um, but yeah, I mean, if there are new ideas for how to make the the process better, a lot of this is fairly easy. To do. Um, so now I'm gonna shift gears and turn over to Shannon for uh, the manager update for um, all the wild stuff that the, she's been doing. Thank you, Michael. Um, so you've heard a lot about what we're working on, so I won't belabor this. Much. Um, I will say, Michael Baroff, thank you for the update on the reframe City Hall mural subcommittee. Um, the subcommittee hasn't met a bit for a bit because we've been in a bit of a holding pattern while we get the consulting team on board, but we anticipate that we'll start up again soon. I love this notion of uh, potentially this intersection with SMC and this uh, residency that they're doing. I think there could bear a lot of uh, fruit there. Um, so I think there's a lot of potential there. And maybe we need to even rethink what that subcommittee is, whether it's a city hall mural subcommittee or if it's something different. So I think that we can agendize this for a future meeting for sure. Um, what we have been doing, um, as many of you may recall, the twists and turns of this uh, project. Originally, um, we were asked to cover the city, not cultural affairs, City was asked to cover the murals while we did the assessment. And then um, after doing some work around that, uh, the council member who led that directive by city council said, actually, we don't need to cover it. Let's do some kind of display of youth art in the lobby. So we pivoted and um, Naomi did a fantastic job uh, working with Carla Fantosi from Virginia Avenue Park identifying an artist and educator, Glenna Avia, uh, to lead some youth workshops. And you'll remember I sent an update about this with some wonderful photos of her leading the workshop uh, for these children and um, one of the artworks that one of them created. So we'll be, um, we're working on finalizing those artworks in, with graphic designers to get the temporary display up. Um, as you might recall, and I think this is something maybe potentially with SMC, we see this display as something that could evolve over the life of the project. So within the City Hall mural, kind of like what they were saying with their exhibition was gonna evolve. So um, we are just about complete with our contracting process with the consultant. 
So I would anticipate by the end of the month that should be in place and we can really start the work um, in earnest uh, to get this project uh, going uh, before the end of the, the calendar year. Any questions about the mural project? Um, next is uh, the new, I mentioned in a previous meeting, our last meeting, that um, the Miles Memorial Playhouse and the Camera Obscura Art Lab have been shuttered because of COVID and the budget and staff cuts. Um, the camera still is hosting artists and residents, uh, but it is not open to the public. Um, and then the cultural programming at the Annenberg Community Beach House has largely been curtailed as well. And so we have um, hired some consultants, one of which is Nagin Singh, who used to be the director of the peer, uh, to help us with a process to really engage the arts um, <clears throat> around what the future um, of these uh, buildings might be. Um, we, they were always kind of really a lot was done on a very little budget in a way that I would argue was unsustainable. So we're really looking at sustainable models for ongoing um, activations of both of these facilities and then rebooting the cultural programs in the house. So I sent you the link in my update uh, to a survey. I encourage you all to complete that and share it with your networks. And um, we will be circling back with you all um, on this project as it moves through and may bring the uh, consultants to one of your meetings or uh, have other ways for you all to interact with them and weigh in on the future of these. Um, and the last item is what I announced at the last meeting, the Freeze LA is moved to Santa Monica, which is great and huge. And so we're kind of, I met with Freeze, we had an introductory conversation. I sent them a follow-up recently and I'm waiting. I have a call later this week uh, to really kind of find a way for um, the Arts Commission to be engaged with this. And so I think this could take a number of different shapes and we brainstormed some ideas. So we'll have something a little more concrete, hopefully, um, even before the next meeting, hopefully in the next few weeks, because time moves quickly and February is just around the corner. So uh, we want to make sure that Again, the arts in Santa Monica and the artists and the arts infrastructure and the Bergamot galleries are all given a moment to connect and shine and really show the arts in Santa Monica and the vibrancy that they are. So that's the freeze update. Hopefully more on that very, very soon. That's my update. That's fantastic. Um, Shannon, I, I think the, uh, the work that you guys done bringing freeze um, here, I mean, you know, their last venue was Paramount Studios. You know, they they were they were playing with the big boys, and and I think I think they're gonna look back and see they made the right decision coming to Santa Monica because um, I, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be an amazing thing for this city, and I think it's gonna be good for them. And congratulations again. I, I think it's it's a real coup. And it's, well, it took a village, so. Well, yeah. they're they're moving they're moving west because they started at Paramount, then last year they were in Beverly Hills, and now they're moving towards Santa Monica. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it, it's it's like some. All right. Um. Well, I think all the formal stuff is is um winded down now. Um. Vice Chair Baroff had had a a great suggestion a, a while back. Um. That um. As we as we ramp off and, and close the uh, the meetings, we we should have anyone who has anything, um, any news they want to share, any any um, thoughts or ideas, kind of just a few minutes of open forum. Now, this was actually something I mentioned, um, Vice Chair um, Walter Meyer, several times tonight, and this was something he actually would do. So this was something. This was the way meetings used to end. But what ended up happening is that meetings were going so long and so long and they would go on and on for hours that the commissioners asked to like cut that. So um, we're going to try bringing them back and um, and hopefully um, people will, um, you know, be brief. But but whatever, uh, you know, you want to share with us, it's a great way for us to know each other. Since COVID happened, the the sort of. um 
you know, doing this all on a, a very crude, pixelated, um, glitchy technology um, is less than ideal. It's better than nothing, but we all look for the day when we can sit in the same room and look each other in the eye and really shake each other's hands. But um, um, uh, we, we've sort of like forgotten each other. We, we don't know each other as well as we used to when things were in real time and in, in real life. But um, I, I think uh, what Michael is saying is right. So anyone who's got anything to share with us, please um, just speak up. Well, I'll go. Oh, who's that? Sorry, Michael. <laughs> oh, you go, Mary Liz, please. Okay, thanks. So I mentioned this, it's in our meeting uh, minutes from last time, but just to, for time, like, um, Getty 25th anniversary festivals have been really great. The very last one is taking place in two weeks in Watts, celebrating the Watts community. So in case anybody's interested, then um, head over there. And then there's sort of the best of the best of the performers from all 10 festivals will be at the Getty Family Festival weekend on September 17th and 18th um, for anybody interested in that. And then this next thing is a comment that I don't necessarily think we need conversation about. I'll reach out to Shannon off, but I just want you to know I had the question and now I'm blanking what my question was. Hold on. I lost it. Um, I'll put it in the notes or I'll send an email to other people, but I had it. Um, oh, I know what it was. Sorry. Evidently, Santa Monica City Council is following the governor's directive about not meeting in person, yet there's a whole bunch of other cities whose commissions are meeting in person. So I think I might send an email to city council saying we'd love to be back. I'm not sure if everybody agrees with that, but um, I will talk offline with you, Shannon, about that. But I just find it so interesting that we keep, we meaning the city council keeps extending it when other cities have been back for a long time in person. So. I'll find out more from you about that. I just wanted to let other people know I was thinking about that. Thank you. And Mary, if I could just briefly while everyone's here, it's not because of COVID that they're doing, like the risk of infection that they're doing it. It's because they really want to do some kind of hybrid where people will be able to participate virtually in the meetings. And they don't have to show up in person. And that's going to take a lot of technology capacity and staff capacity that we don't have. So the city's the city clerk keeps coming kind of back with, well, if you want this, here's how to do it. So that's kind of the status of it. It's not because of the health risk, um, but I'm happy okay. to talk more. Thank you. Um, I, have I, have an announcement. I have an announcement. If I, I have an announcement. Um, okay, you go. <laughs> on September 13th, um, the second of four annual um, it, collaborations will take place again because of COVID. It will the second year will again be via Zoom, in which um, my my little uh, group EZTV will be collaborating once again with um, LA SIGGRAPH. And if you're familiar with anything having to do with the history of digital art, SIGGRAPH is the preeminent, largest, oldest. Um, International Association for uh, Digital Artists in the World. And um, uh, for our second foray, which will be September 13th online, I think it starts at 6.30 or something like that. Anyone's interested, let me know. I'll send you a link. Um, we inch, we've we uh, interviewed um, Roman Borosko, who is uh, 93 years old, uh, one of the inventors of algorithmic art. People think algorithmic art began in the last 10 years. He made his first one in the 1960s. And um, Barbara Nessam, who's uh, 83. Barbara, um, not only was she one of the first women to uh, be commissioned to illustrate a Time magazine cover, but she also became one of the early female um, digital artists. Many of the early digital art pioneers were women. Another one is Vivica Sorensen, who um, started USC's animation department, and um, is uh, she was a uh, I think she, her last position was at Stanford, but she's taught all over the world. Um, Paul Sims, who's a MacArthur Genius winner, who began, uh, who decoded much of the um, sort of organic digital imaging. He, as an artist, invented that code um, and also created the company GenArx and, uh, of course, Brain Dead and forgetting there was one other person. But, um, early seminal authors of the world we take for granted, um, often overlooked in the first drafts of so-called media arts history, but um, 
it's our passion and conviction to make sure the credit is given where credit is due. And these people invented our world. And um, so we'll be doing the second of four forays into, um, you know, grabbing people before they decide to check on to uh, the next incarnation. No, we were very honored to um, have them all say yes. Anyone who's interested, I'd be happy to share that link. So that's my blah, blah, blah. Okay, may I have a sharing, if I may? Thank you. <laughs> Sir. I'm, I'm pleased to let you know that I'm going to have a solo exhibit of my abstract paintings at Santa Monica College Emeritus Gallery. Congrats. A nice little space. On Second Street, thank you. Second Street, this between Wilshire and Arizona, the show will be in the gallery, and there'll be a hybrid online opening on September 21st, right late afternoon. I'd be happy to just forward the information. So it's quite exciting. Um, pleased to show that. So the paintings will be in the gallery. I guess on the opening, Jesse Benson, who's the curator, do he's going to do some interviewing. I'll have some videos. I'm posted up, so quite exciting. I appreciate it, and um, hopefully some of you can come check it out. Do you Thank have you. a sense of time, Michael? The the openings um, are usually around five to six thirty. I think right. this, this one's. A, you said you told me it was the twenty first, which I believe is a Wednesday. So it's a it's a online opening, and and then the, the gallery is probably is going to be probably open during the days. Uh, I'm not 100% sure yet. I'm trying to create an environment there. My paintings are abstract. They're kind of, you know, meditative and quiet. So I was hoping we have some nice little quiet benches there. You can sit and relax and look at the paintings and um, have an experience. Okay, quiet. so the opening is virtual. The opening is virtual. Okay. Again, because San Marco College is adhering to masks okay. on campus. You have to be vaccinated. And so you have the whole... But this is this is the first time they're actually having an in-gallery um, mounting of a show in quite a while. So, great! Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, then I think it's it's time. Michael uh, Masushi, I I um I wanted to also uh, offer you know my. Uh, you know my 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 knowledge and and you know and and experience in the in the web three nft world because i think i think it will be an interesting uh like uh merge because we could actually immortalize you know all those pioneers of of uh absolutely of, sir of the by yeah. uh by minting their their works and their messages in the blockchain Oh no, no, many of them already have. So like okay. a Roman, he's he's been auctioned at Christie's. Um, many, many uh, I think probably all of them already have done so. Um, these people are um perhaps not on the the radar of of the general public even in the art world, but but certainly the intelligentsia or the so-called digerati. Um, th these people are the Rembrandts and the you know yeah. So so um uh. I can't say with certainty all five, uh, but I suspect they all have. Certainly, I would say three for sure um, are, are well in, and the other two, if they haven't done so, they're certainly well well aware. And I mean, you know, the SIGGRAPH crowd is totally, you know, totally aware and on board of of, of, of the world. I, I, I myself have a piece of paper from the MIT Media Lab and crypto, you know, so we 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 we're with you. We we are we are simpatico and we you know we we just need to communicate more. But absolutely, sir, I, I welcome. And, and, your and, and, and on another note, I also have a a, a strong relationship with the state of Luchita Hurtado, which she was the Santa Monica president, and the Lee Mullican. So it would be nice if if you know we could uh, as as the Art Commission of the City of Santa Monica. Do some kind of retrospective, retrospective, or some, or, or or some kind of booth for them in uh, in Free LA. So now that you know, I just want to throw it out there. You know, I can always uh, you know talk to them and and you know and bring them over. Very cool. So we we can I um, agendaize things. I think one of the you know 
this sort of like wrap up thing, um, it's a great way to like kick around ideas when, when there's something really, um, we're going to put it on the agenda, Federico, and we're going to talk it and hopefully we're going to, you know, make some, make some things happen. Right. But, uh, but what we're going to make happen now is a little wind down. Um, so there is a public art committee meeting on uh, Monday, October 17th at 5.30. And then right after that, there'll be the Arts Commission meeting, October 17th at 6.30, which will include um, the election of the uh, the officers, the chair and the vice chair. And, um, and with that, um, I'm going to say thank you all so, so, so very much. We went a bit over what we were supposed to do, but that's what we do and uh, I think that's all very cool. Um, I look forward to seeing you all in October. You have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you. Great meeting. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You Thanks a lot, everyone.